The anterior view of the neck is the region between the lower border of the mandible and the root of the neck as seen from the front. The edge of the trapezius can be seen at the lateral corner of this view. The sternocleidomastoid muscle runs obliquely through the neck to divide it into an anterior and a posterior triangle. The anterior triangle is the region between the sternocleidomastoid of the two sides. It is covered by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and the platysma lies in its surface in the subcutaneous tissue. The lateral view of the neck extends from the inferior border of the mandible to the clavicle. The trapezius is seen posteriorly while the anterior midline of the neck is the ventral edge of this view. The sternocleidomastoid runs obliquely through this region and splits it into an anterior and a posterior triangle. The posterior triangle is better seen in this view. The back of the neck and adjacent head are discussed in the posterior view. It is an area extending from the level external occipital protuberance to the C7 spine level. It is the cutaneous territory of the dorsal ramus of cervical spinal nerves. The upper part of the trapezius is the most important muscle in this region. The splenius capitis and semispinalis capitis are deep to it. The suboccipital triangle is the deepest part of this region. The root of the neck is the area around the superior thoracic aperture. The thorax, neck, and the upper limb converge here. Vessels and nerves pass through this zone as they reach the upper limb, neck, or the thorax. It is an area bound by the clavicle, manubrium sterni, and the C7 vertebra. The superior thoracic aperture is located in the depths of this region. The scalenus anterior is the key muscle of this region. The viscera of the neck comprises the larynx, trachea, esophagus, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, and the submandibular salivary gland. The adjacent part of the pharynx, laryngopharynx, is also included. The larynx is prominently seen in the subhyoid region in the midline. The trachea is attached to it inferiorly. The lymphatics of the head drain into a chain of nodes extending from the occiput to the chin. Each cluster of nodes has a distinct name, but the areas of drainage are overlapping. There is also a deep ring around the pharynx. The lymphatics of the neck drain into a superficial and a deep group. All the lymphatics drain into the deep cervical lymphatics of the neck. For clinical staging and treatment, nodes are labeled from level 1 to level 5. A mid-sagittal cross-section of the head and neck presents an interesting panorama of structures. The nasal septum is prominently seen. The oral cavity with tongue is below this. The cranial cavity with meninges and brain is above the nasal cavity. Behind is the vertebral column. The mandible and hyoid bone, larynx, trachea, and esophagus occupy the space in front of the neck. The inlet to the thorax demarcates the neck from the thorax. This is the region of the root of the neck. The parasagittal section differs from the mid-sagittal section in a few areas only. The rest of the design of the head and neck are similar. 
The lateral wall of the nasal cavity shows the conchi and the meati in great detail. The medial aspect of the cerebrum is seen with its characteristic sulci and gyri. The lateral ventricles are seen below the corpus callosum. The frontal sinus is seen in full view between the tables of the skull.